This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, Jared Morgan. G'day, everyone. How you going? It On is midweek for us, Jared. We don't record mm, midweek. It is. We don't, typically, no, but today, we, we are. Kind of have, yeah, we kind of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> normally, we figure with uh, when one of these pinball shows uh, comes out from Zen that, uh, you know... The news Let is going to be hot, the... but we can probably yeah. sit a couple of days. Today's not this one. <laughs> not this one. Today needs comment no. now. <laughs> um, yes. So we're we're making. A, we obviously didn't record this past weekend. Uh, kind of being tipped off that we're around. probably going to want to have a, a recording right after this. So that's why we we delayed last weekend so that we could come on this and then go forward here. So mm-hmm. yes. Uh, Big news about the upcoming Pinball FX game. And if you've been an observer of our channel over the past couple of months, uh, a lot of what we've been kind of hedging our bets on and priming everybody for, you shouldn't be too terribly surprised about the information today. However, Mm. we're not going to fault you either for being disappointed (laughs) in the information today. Um, Yeah. It's, it's okay to not like the news that you're hearing um, because, you know, it has an associated price tag with it, which we don't know yet, but we can assume is not going to be cheap. Well, as, as one person said, uh, today's uh, pinball show was basically ripping off the Band-Aid. Um, you're going to have to do it yeah. at some point, so you might as well just rip it off now. <laughs> rip it off, get it done. Yep, Exactly. So what and, are you know, what are we exactly talking about? You're like, well, what, what, what? Yeah, we're going to dispense with all the banter. We're going to go cut straight to the chase and get yeah, we're you... getting into this. Yeah, mm. here's here's the news that you need to basically know, and then we'll we'll dive into all sorts of everything. But the big news is first off, Pinball Effects is going to be on Nintendo Switch, PS5. Xbox Series X and S, I believe is what they're called, mm. and the Epic Game Store. Not on Steam. Mm-mm. That's a big one right there. Not uh, Steam. And I should say it'll eventually be on Steam, but not right away. We'll get to that. We'll and to the that. other thing is that, no, your table purchases from FX3 are not going to be transferring over to Pinball FX. You will, in fact, Sorry. have to be doing new purchases. That's right. So, new platform, new purchases. We'll get into all sorts of <laughs> justifications and reasons. And, and I mean, I've, I've been, after the show, I've been on Reddit. I've been on Discord. I've been on Digital Pinball Fans, of which Digital Pinball Fans got a shout out on the show, too. Um, <laughs> but seeing what people's reactions, I was looking at all the live chat reactions for the YouTube video. So I've got a there's there's a good sense of many of the aspects that people are interested in and uh, complaining about or going I understand so we're gonna try and walk through all of this uh, in whatever manner we can right Jared we're gonna we're gonna work our way through it it's lots of information to cover but you know us we'll get through it all right so I guess we should start right here at the beginning right here at the beginning it's uh, basically on why pinball effects. Why, uh, why the new technology? That yeah, is, why? it's become. This is all Mel uh, Mel Kirk yeah. quotes. Um, yeah. It's become harder and harder to keep a game engine up to date with the demand to support new platforms and devices. Hmm. Fair call. Fair call. So essentially, it's you've reached that point where you're spending so much time supporting the backlog of stuff that going forward becomes monumental task in and of itself. Yeah. Essentially, you when you support and make your own game engine, you're actually a game engine company more than you are a development studio. <laughs> so, like, you know, it's uh, diminishing returns if you have to use an engine. I mean, when the, uh, the PX engine was, uh, you know, introduced nearly 10 years ago now, it was the only way they could do what they had to do in FX, in the FX platform. Yeah. Um, but now there's just better options out there. Like there's 
there's a huge developing um, support network with um, the the you know Epic uh, and Unreal, and you know why wouldn't you plug into that ecosystem when literally everyone else is? Yeah. Right. Yeah, and in case you're wondering what we're doing here, folks, because if you're anything like me, the first time you watched the video, it just kind of was like a wash of information. So we're going to yeah. kind of focus in on some of the things you might have missed, some of the, the, the more salient quotes. Um, it, it's, it was essentially the, uh, the typical fire hose where you <laughs> get like, bomb, when it's like, here is the information that yes. you need. You know? So related to what Jared was just saying, here's our next quote. Sometimes you have to look at things and ask, at what point is maintaining these older systems stopping us from making something really new? If you've, again, watched the show with any frequency back in the day when we were all about uh, Farsight and the Pinball Arcade, hmm. my God, Jared, how many times did we say, can you stop supporting the five-year-old Android platform and start being concerned about what the current best generation platforms are. Yeah, like stop supporting devices that are literally so underpowered that they couldn't even probably run Flappy Bird. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just stop doing that. Stop hamstringing yourself with platforms and hardware that just don't make sense today. Like, there's going to be a point where you have to disappoint customers and say, hey, look, sorry, your five-year-old Android device running custom firmware because you can't get any more security updates isn't going to be supported anymore. You have to rip the Band-Aid off, Chris, yeah, right? Yeah. So, uh, again, it just kind of makes sense with this, uh, you know, at some point you may stop maintaining these older systems. And we kind of called it that it was, this is a good clean break opportunity. Mm. And by doing it a is. hard break, as much as it sucks to know that you can't carry over your things, but to make a hard break means, boom, now you're starting at square one and you're starting right at the start of a console life cycle, which means you're in a good place for that console to go on at least for a long time. So yeah. it does make a, a fair amount of sense there. It certainly does. Like, you know, you, it's, there's always going to be, you know, no one wants to have to spend money on stuff they kind of, already have entitlements to. I, yeah. I noticed I didn't say own because you never own it. You only <laughs> have entitlements to it. Um, but, eh, you know, if it sounds like the the reason why they're doing it is, and we'll get into this probably later, um, but there are good reasons for doing it. And if I can see as far as the, the proposition that someone tells me, it's like, well, here's some bad news but this is why it's bad news, and these are the good reasons why we have to do it, then I go, yeah, okay, fair Un enough, Unfortunately, I, I think people hear the bad news and they just stop listening. And yeah, they that's go, oh, I think, bad news shock. And, and that's what I think. I mean, <clears> it, it happened to me while watching, right? Where I just like, I heard what I heard. I went to the, looking at the, the comments. Meanwhile, I'm missing all, all the, the reasoning that's all going stuff. on. Yeah. yeah. All the actual reasons why it's a good idea right. or why it's justified. Yeah. So just in terms of more of the reasoning about uh, why they felt the need to shift uh, platform, um, basically to you know go from Pinball FX3, which was working you know by all accounts fairly fine, but wasn't as feature rich as uh, or its age was showing in terms of feature rich aspects, but nobody was going, oh my god, this game needs an overhaul. Like again, like we were saying with pinball arcade where at a certain point that's like, right this game needs an overhaul nobody's really calling for fx3 to have an overhaul so it does become no, not well, really. why in why in the hell are we are we getting one now so we're going to look at just the on the idea of using the unreal engine uh we can focus engineering bandwidth when they say bandwidth it's personnel <laughs> yeah. um, we can focus engineering bandwidth on pinball effects platform development instead of working to keep the engine up to date. Let's just focus on that for a second there. Yeah, if you can, instead of pooling some of your resources to have to make the game constantly function, to be able to use a game engine that you're not responsible for, it's now that maker's responsibility to make it function. So yeah, if... That's right. Yeah, you know, if... if Sony decides to do some kind of an update to their system, 
that causes your engine to not work as well with whatever they're now doing. Or maybe uh, it's a case of, I mean, think about it. your first generation platform or platform uh, games that come out when the console cycle first starts versus from the same studio game that comes at the end of the console cycle. Obviously, they've figured out how to milk and work the, oh, yeah. the platform, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. So rather than Zen now having to be the ones to figure that out, they're going to hand this over to Epic and the Unreal Engine 4 to figure it out. <laughs> and so The neat thing, well, I'll say the neat thing about that too, uh, sorry for interjecting, is that the the fact is everyone is on a level playing field as well. So all the technical advances that other studios do with the engine, you know, that information is going to be out there. Yeah. And potentially some of that information can be used by other studios, potentially Zen included, to optimize the way their graphic pipelines work, um, to maybe squeeze a few more frames per second out of things, you know? Yeah. Uh, particularly on consoles which have constrained hardware and that sort of thing, like being able to milk as much performance out of um, an engine as possible yep. can only be good for the platform that you're developing and for the game that you're developing. So this is a good thing, right? Yes, which we've been, again, we've been commenting about how if they switch to a new engine, that would be a good thing. So this is kind of just like, you know, confirming everything that we were <laughs> speculating on. Um mm. So second, we no longer need to chase first-party support. By first-party support, again, they're talking about Sony, Xbox, Nintendo. Um, mm. uh, we can let Epic worry about and focus on more important tasks. And finally, we get access to an awesome engine that can power next-gen graphics, exciting new tech like HDR and ray tracing, and so much more. Yeah. Like I've seen so many comments from like real massive pinheads that you know we want ray tracing and we want... We we'll definitely want HDR, and we want 120 frames a second. You know, this could be a possibility now. Like, maybe not on release, but well, it's a possibility, and it's not platform. going to be up to Zen to to figure it worry out. About they it. can worry about no. the game rather than worrying about the the little graphical bells and whistles that you're you're interested in. Because tuning, because that all comes down to game game engine tuning, and that's the most expensive part. Like doing that, get like getting the eighty percent or the ninety percent. That's not the hard bit. It's that last ten percent of tuning. Yeah, that's really time consuming and really costly. Yeah. So yeah, not not having to worry about that will save them literally weeks of development time a year. Yeah. Uh, going on to obviously, people immediately thought, oh, well, if they're using uh, Unreal Engine, what's that mean for their physics? Hmm. We are bringing our own physics with us into Unreal Engine. That's what that means. <laughs> yeah. So the physics engine is different from the graphics engine. They just need to hmm. integrate the two, and then they're good to go uh, yep. on that. Um, again, the, the graphics engine is going to be a performance. Uh, hopefully, we'll make the game run even more efficiently on performance, yep. which will allow better graphics on things like the Switch which aren't mm -hmm. going to be graphical power horses. But on the other hand, turn it the complete other direction, and now maybe, yeah, like you said, we'll get 120 frames per second gameplay yeah. ability. you got your ray tracing. you got HDR. You've got uh, more dynamic lighting, which they showed off. They showed off a comparison between the FX3 version of uh, Wild West Showdown and, the Un and having it running in Unreal 4. And it's subtle, but it's also subtle because you're watching a YouTube video. <laughs> when you're right. in game with a big old screen in front of you, it's going to look massively better. Um, so more dynamic yep. lighting is definitely going to be a thing. But it's also think about all the chrome that is on a pinball machine and how the light yep. bounces and reflects on that and the shadows. That's where you're really going to start noticing and the difference, and that's going to bring you more into that realistic feeling of playing actual pinball. That's right. I mean, you've already noticed on, on the FX3 um, platform, they've already got things like shadows to an extent. Like when you, for example, the, the light casting out underneath slingshots and stuff like that, yeah. 
there's there's definite light casting happening in there. So taking that one step further and applying the Unreal's lighting engine to it, it will just number one, it's going to be real time. I, I'm, I'm sometimes I wonder if that some of that lighting's baked in. I'm not sure if it is or not. Yeah, but, I don't know either. Um, but you know, if it's if it is actually being rendered at the moment, great. But if it's currently sort of baked in to an extent, perhaps on the lesser platforms as well, like mobile, it may have to be baked in. Right. Um, which I'm thinking, like mobile, for example. Although, you know, I, as a short aside, I actually did fire up Williams Pinball on mobile the other day, and I was reminded at how good the, the actual overall package is from a graphics perspective mm -hmm. on on that. And it makes me wonder, I, th I have a feeling that's already using Unreal. Um, oh, do you? Looking at it. Yeah, oh. I reckon that's probably using Unreal already. I have a feeling that that was a bit of an experiment in the wild, that platform. Because um, you yeah, have a look at the, uh, the the way the tables render. They've got like a, they've got definite lighting characteristics to them. And the, the way that the, the lighting works on mobile in that particular version is very different to the other platforms that are out there on mobile okay so if you compare williams pinball to say something like the um the doom pack yeah for example the lighting is different and mm. it's got definite shadows and it's got definite like real natural looking bloom on things like um flashes and stuff i've okay. got to think it's an unreal an unreal experiment in the um, wild mm. we'll have to inquire <laughs> we will we'll have to we'll go have to, we'll so, find out. that's that's an interesting theory there um so was is this hiding in plain sight right um right right but so, what yeah. i was gonna say though is just for those of you that have it boot up fx2 and mm. pick a zen original from there uh you know if you want to boot up mars if you want to boot up epic quest i don't care boot mars up, is a good one to boot up actually yeah boot yeah. that up and then or, or shoot, even go with the free table. Go ahead, boot up Sorcerer's Lair, and then mm. open it up in FX3. Yeah. You're going to see a difference in the lighting yeah. and in the graphics because that was the last overhaul to the PX engine that happened. So mm -hmm. you're going to have that same kind of overhaul happen going into Unreal. And when you look at FX2 and then look at on in pinball effects it's going to be night and day just like holy crap so i yeah. did have to laugh at some commenter where they're like i don't care. i don't ever want to play in dark mode anyway and it's like well congratulations but you're still going to appreciate shadows and glimmers and and you know uh, bright flasher lights <laughs> mm -hmm. so basically all the stuff that you know um pro pinball um did by pre-rendering everything yes. um that is going to be that but more because it's going to be real time yeah. and your ball is going to interact with things real time it's going to be quite an impressive look i think <laughs> so then we get into uh, basically what this means switching engines and mm. that is every table in our library has to be reworked updated and optimized for unreal engine so we're talking about basically a complete rewrite of 100 tables. So and I think a good way of <laughs> thinking of it is calling this an HD remaster, you know, like, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and I'll just start, you know, well, actually remember, when you, remaster, remember when you bought think, Kingdom probably. Hearts back on the PS2? And mm. remember when you just bought it now because it was, you know, the Kingdom Hearts 2.3 or whatever remaster? That's what you're going to have to be kind of getting in your noggin mm. as to what is going on here you know they didn't it wasn't a free patch for you to, <laughs> to get the no. hd version you know um so yeah apply the same logic and i think your your analogy about like hd remaster or even blu-ray remaster because this is sort of like the level it's at like really it, this is what we're talking about here and that's yeah. that's quite a good thing to say and you know you, you've got the opportunity um to decide to pay for that remaster or not so yeah. yeah. Your choice as a consumer. Your choice. Um, and then, of course, because of, I mean, again, here's where we get into the suck part, mm. which is you're going to have to repurchase or, you know, rebuy these things. So let's see what they say, what yep. uh, Mel says about his, uh, on mm. why past purchases won't carry over into pinball effects. We are totally rebuilding and remastering these tables, some of which date back to 2007 in a new engine, which is a massive undertaking. Uh, mm. 
2007, eh? Wow. Like so, those tables, I'm going to be looking forward to seeing what they look like remastered because there are some atrocious, <laughs> muddied messes back there in 2007. Like, so uh, let's 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 go a little bit of uh, <clears throat> inside baseball here. <laughs> mm. I don't. Know, I'm sure we've talked about it at some point, but at the time when we were going from the PlayStation Three cycle and the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty cycle into the next gen, so Xbone and PS Four. Mm-hmm. Um, Zen made the decision that all of your table purchases will flip over into FX3. Because they, yes. they put out FX3, like, I think almost at the same time. Because mm. um, I know Pinball Arcade, also, they were a launch title with, uh, with Pinball Arcade on the PS4. Yes. With Zen, they let you port over everything. Done. Everybody's like, yay! With yep. Pimble Arcade, didn't happen. You had, and basically, Farsight gave us like a, I want to say it was like a, a one-month window to be able to purchase all the tables at like half off. Mm. And that was it. So they only gave a discount. Well, here's the thing that you may not know. <laughs> Sony and Microsoft, they just want to be paid for hosting on their stores. Mm, yeah, they want the money. They Who want the money, thought? and they're saying, hey, we're a new console. Pay up. We would like more money, please. <laughs> so Zen ate the cost. They mm. paid a big fee and said, we want our customers to be able to have all the tables. Yes. And so long as Sony and Microsoft were being paid, they said, sure. Farsight didn't choose to go that route. Farsight made the whole argument of, hey, we're redoing things. We're putting it. It's a new platform, new graphics, uh, because basically they were doing the uh, DX11 version on PS4. Yeah. And so therefore, that's why you're having to, to pay again. I mean, it's a massive so cost. Much, it's a massive much, cost. They were pretty much using exactly the same argument as as Zen is now. Yes. Like they they felt that the work they were putting into uh, DX11 was enough that it warranted a repurchase. And back then, my choice of why I had abandoned <clears throat> placed, uh, the PlayStation Arcade, uh, Pinball Arcade on the PS3 and had switched over to PC was because I suspected that exact thing was going to happen. I didn't want to have to repurchase yeah. again. So I was like, if I'm going to have to repurchase again, I'm going to do it on the PC and mm. call it a day. And not have to do exactly. it you know, anymore. Obviously, now I'm going to have to do it. Well, look, we get codes for beta testing. So yeah. am I going to have to purchase <laughs> one more? No, but I feel the pain. Believe me. Um, yeah. I, I. It doesn't mean I'm not consumer friendly. Um well, that's right. I mean, you know, we know the harsh reality of it is that, you know, if we do get keys, whatever, that still doesn't like we we know what free purchasing things like yeah. is like, and it sucks and it's yeah. expensive. So, don't think for a second that we don't empathize with with people who have to who are in that position and who have to make a really tough decision about is this something I can actually afford to do? And like, you know, Zen is looking into it as is with the next quote here. We're also looking at ways to bundle and price the older tables, which we can now refer to as legacy tables, with first parties, that would be your Sony's and Microsoft's, uh, to mm-hmm. make the whole process as painless as possible. So that's them negotiating with the Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo uh, to say, hey, look, what can you do by the way of you know discounts, promotions, things like that. Um, it also run... might be, because they're specifically saying this is our <clears throat> legacy tables, that it also might be in terms of the companies that they have licenses with for the license tables, mm. for them to also go, look, guys, these are old. You can't expect people yeah. to want to pay full price once again. So we're going to still, we're going to sign a new agreement with you guys, but for these older tables, we're going to be allowed to sell them at a lesser price and not have to pay you the full price version of 
uh, the, the, the full cost of, your of the cut, license, basically. Yeah, yeah, the license cut per table per sale. Yeah, yeah that's right. Exactly. So, um, I also there was a lot of comments on Reddit. Uh, Mel had popped on there, so did Akosh. Um, just like guys, this is it. It's fluid. <laughs> We mm-hmm. still don't know exactly how all this can can go, um, but we're going to try and do what we can to at least ease it a little Reduce bit. Reduce the shock as what, however we can. I mean, they don't want to... I mean, I'd imagine the last thing they want to do is is upset consumers. They know this is a big deal, which is yeah. probably why they're telling us now. Yeah. Like, they're really giving us a long runway to get our heads around this and trying to say, look, you know, we know this is going to suck. And we're going to try and do whatever we can to make it suck less. But we understand it's still going to suck. So I'm really sorry as, about that. As, as I think it. you so so eloquently put it in, uh, I don't know if it's the last year or the show before, it can either suck now or it can suck later. Suck, but it's... suck later. <laughs> it's still going to suck. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, the good news is when it comes to what tables are going to be available, looks like we're only losing two. The vast majority of our tables from Pinball FX3 are being remastered for Pinball FX. The exceptions are those for The Walking Dead and Portal, which is really, really not a surprise because The Walking Dead was based on the Telltale Games game, and mm. Telltale's isn't around anymore. Yeah, right. And Portal is... You know, Valve, is who Valve. runs Steam, who probably Who's went, not getting... what, you're going to Epic? Yeah, <laughs> see you later. <laughs> bye bye no bye you know. Um, but you know what I find funny there? It's yeah. like the vast majority. That's not all games except. That's the vast majority of. So uh, do we need to read into that further and say, are there anything, any other ones that maybe the studio is hedging their bets on at the moment because they're still trying to work out the... The, the T's and I's that need to be dot, dotted and crossed. Yeah, I don't know. Because um, otherwise you would say that will be worded as all tables are coming over except for these two. But the vast majority means something very different. Well, you're right. I mean, maybe they finally decided that nobody wants to play Rome. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. I don't or know. Tesla. Uh, um, <laughs> it's, it, Although, you know, I'd actually like to see Tesla redone. Because I think if it was redone, it might actually be more enjoyable to play. It'll redone and also maybe with a rule bump. I, as I was well. gonna say I want a code update to Tesla. Yeah, it needs, just like because they did a, a code because Mars and Epic Quest got code updates when they went from mm. FX2 to FX3. I want yep. a code update on Tesla, um, and I would mm. say for God's sake, do a code update then on. Although you need to do even more on V12. <laughs> um, that's I don't know if that's a, I don't know if that one's salvageable. <laughs> maybe just a retheme. <laughs> <laughs> just scrap it um yeah. so yeah I, you're right though that is interesting wording um but that might have just been the way it came out of mel's mouth too you know it, in the, in it the may moment. have been um yeah. but the other thing i was gonna say it, is those are the only two tables that have their own column and never had another table underneath that's true they're very brand specific tables they were, they were one and done mm-hmm so getting rid of those is good because it essentially cleans up cleans up the the menu. Well, it's not which... that it's good, but it's <clears> understandable. <laughs> hmm. I mean, Portal was a fun table. Um, the Walking Dead. I didn't really like. Uh, Although it looks no, great in VR. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it actually yes, and it, it does mo- actually look great in VR. They also want to make a point that uh, they're not going to be repeating the mistake of the FX2 to FX3 transition in that. FX2 just went poof, gone. Yeah. Off FX3 the store. is still going to be downloadable. Tables are still going to be purchasable. They're not losing the license to sell them. Yeah. If they are at some point going to lose the license, they're saying that they're going to give plenty of notice so that you can go ahead and purchase ahead of time. But mm-hmm. um, for all intents and purposes, FX3 is going to be very much still available. Just not updated with any just new not updated. content. Yeah. Mm. So with any new content, who knows if that means it sounds like only that last massive bug fix quality of life update will be the last update it receives. Um, maybe, but um, you know, yeah, we'll touch we upon that know. at the, at the end of our slideshow here. 
Um, mm. Let's move on to the next thing because, as Jared just said, with when we were talking about VR and uh, tables coming, that it'd be more likely that we'd get released in small packs, small packages. Yeah. Because the sticker shock would be massive if it was just like, Huge. here's everything. Yeah. So along those lines, right now our plan is to release the entire library in two phases, half at launch and the other half roughly a few months later. But then Mel goes on to say, like, they'll release all the Star Wars tables at the same time and yeah. all the Marvel tables at the same time. So it'll be kind of... Uh, it'll be interesting be to see how they release those. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, of note, and this was again on one of the other forums, uh, wasn't in the, the pinball show, Mel said they are very much working to get Marvel onto the Switch. Mm, um, which is awesome news for that platform. I think that's the first that's time he's a... utterly, like, actually said that out loud. <laughs> I think you're right. So, And, like, so many people on that platform are just gagging for that license to be yes. put onto Switch. It's such a logical fit. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's good to know that. And then let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what we were just saying here. All tables in a certain collection could launch at once. So, for example, Marvel and Star Wars would all be at the same time. And grouping these mm. collections together would allow us to offer lower pricing for these legacy tables. Yeah. So, again, it might be that idea of, hey, we sold to Nintendo when we sold Star Wars. It was, what was it? Was it twenty bucks or thirty bucks for the for the whole thing? But they could use that same kind of pricing idea rather than saying, "Oh, we're charging three dollars per table." Yeah, that's right. Um, I think bundling it in this case, it's an easier sell for them to negotiate a flat rate price um, reduction in the markets. Otherwise, it's like, and also well, they're they're managing so many more SKUs as well. Like if they're mm -hmm. releasing the packs the way they are. Like in FX3, they had to have a different SKU yeah. for a software, uh, I forget what the K means, unit, software something. Um, <laughs> anyhow, <laughs> so, so, software something, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> so because they're doing that, they'll, they'll only need to maintain only a few SKUs um, per, per platform, per... Um, uh, platform uh, well per um, console and yeah. all the other platforms so that's going to make their life a lot easier not to mention well. and here's the dirty secret that we all know uh there's plenty of tables that people would go i'm not buying that again no matter mm -hmm. what i'm not gonna yeah. buy that again but yeah if it's included in the bundle well, you're buying it again <laughs> yeah you're and getting is, it whether you like it or not yeah and that is really appealing to let's say you're universal and mm. then all of a sudden here comes in saying hey we're going to do this legacy bundle and universe goes no we don't necessarily want that and then zen comes back with well then you're probably not going to sell a whole lot of that et table <laughs> yeah probably not probably not you're not going to get the licensing fee from or the the yeah you're not going to, you're not going to get that from that so if we put it in a bundle, though, then you will get the, the some money, money from that. that. Yeah. In mm. which case, then Universal will be like, you're on to something. Yeah. So mm. I think that's also yeah, the idea of so. doing these mass bundles so that yeah. people aren't cherry picking. It's you get it all or you don't. And that goes back to when Farsight was doing the seasons. Mm. That's right. It made sense to just pre-purchase a season, not even knowing... Everything because you knew you're going to get 10 tables and that four of them could be that you don't even like them and you're still going to come out breaking even. Yeah, it doesn't even matter. Like, it, yeah, it was more cost effective to get four junk tables with the other ones you may or may not like. It, it was a good deal. Yeah. So bundle them up. Give, them, give me all the tables. You know, also too, you don't want to have any empty slots in your um in, in your menu like no one wants that even though you say oh, i don't want to play those games as soon as a 50 or 75 percent sale comes around you're gonna be filling that slot because it's gonna trigger you you know what's you know what's funny <laughs> I, I own all the marvel movies except for one mm -hmm. I, right. I don't own incredible hulk because mm. 
well, you've changed actors. It really has no bearing on any of the other movies. Um, it, it's it's disposable as far as I'm concerned. I don't need mm. it in the collection. But it does bug me now and then, knowing that it's not there. <laughs> and yeah, it, if I came across it for five bucks, I would probably be like, all right, fine. Yes, I'll, I'll yeah. throw that in there. Yeah, I tight, may never watch it, but at least it's there. Um, yeah. It's a, the slot is filled. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Let's move on to our <laughs> next uh, pulled quote here. All of our focus energy will be on pinball effects going forward. It's just not possible for us to build new tables in both Unreal Engine and the original PX Engine at the same time. This was something that Farsight never learned. <laughs> no. This this was something that they that pretty much most of their consumers who were fans were telling them. Just stop doing this. You're you're spreading yourself were, too thinly. On PC, they were doing two builds. They yes. were doing a DX9 build. They were doing a mm-hmm. DX11 build. It was two different codes. They could literally two different code yeah, bases. They, they could yeah. just do the DX11 and then port it over to DX9. It didn't work. Mm. And the problem was, is it was introducing bugs to both of them. That then they would have to chase down and spending just a lot of time trying to work. Oh, it was. It was a hot mess. Oh my god! Like, so it yeah. was, yeah. It was just like, why are you still catering to who on PC is playing DX9? Get rid of it, you know. Yeah. Um, what? What? Do Do you have stats on who is using DX9? Probably not, because. <laughs> but you but know, there's somebody. <laughs> there's one person, very very vocal, going. I have an 18 year old computer that will only run. So I'm exaggerating with the 18 years, obviously, yes. but you know, it may as well be 18 years old. And I don't want to upgrade because I can't. So therefore, don't make don't make me rage on the internet and uh, call you in many different names under the sun because I just can't play this game because my computer is under spec. Yes. That would be the reason. Because you know, Farsight, you know, for all the foibles they had, they they did at least try. And keep their customers on side with purchases, and that's why they were, to their detriment, um, keeping these older platforms around because they didn't want to have that difficult conversation with their consumers about, "Hey, sorry, we're cutting this release." Now, like this, I also I also read in some of the threads that uh, Mel basically said, and this goes in in line with all this. They're also increasing their employee count. Yes. So not only are you pulling people off of having to deal with the, the PX, PX engine team, so yeah. now you're gaining those employees. They're also hiring more. So there's a massive influx. Thank you, Embracer Group, and your uh, uh, <laughs> in the your, annual money gun. <laughs> yes, um, your money yes. Goes. Um yeah, That's right. So yeah, again, it makes perfect sense that they're just again they're making a clean break of things. They're it's doing a complete all eyes for like. I, I was going to say they're doing an organizational shift, but it's probably not really even that because organizational shifts can be scary. This is not one of those. This is just, hey, we can actually like sunset this platform team that we no longer need, and they can just go straight on in to any other number of projects. And I'm not just talking about pinball. There could be holes for them in all the other new things that they're able to do with the Embracer Group money. Mm-hmm. It, it may not just be FX, like you know. Although it would make sense to put them on FX, given their experience with the with the platform. So, anyway, we don't we don't really pay much attention to <clears throat> the other games Zen makes. Um, I don't even have any insight into what they've got in the works, but I guarantee that they've got stuff in the works. <laughs> it's not just pinball. No, like they they won't just be working on pinball. But and they unlike do have. Side, but again, it's there is a pinball division, and then there's the Zen Games division. It's yeah, not they're, inter- in they're not pulling one off the other for anything. It's literally right. this influx of people is going to the pinball side of things. That's that's right. There's the Zen Indies division, which is like Operencia and all those ones. Yeah, Dreadnautical. And then Dreadnautical, yep. And then there's the FX. Yeah. So there is a clear delineation between the teams. All right. Next piece of bad news. On re- that's releasing on the PS5, Xbox X, Nintendo Switch, and the Epic Game Store. It's a one-year timed exclusive on the Epic Game Store for PC. Okay, so it's mm. launching on all those other systems, and then one-year exclusive on Epic before it would come to Steam. 
which yes. is kind of the standard thing there. What do you notice that's missing there, Jared? Mm, uh, a little company called Valve in their platform called Steam, I think. No, we have already um, said that. That's that's why the whole one year uh, time exclusive. No, what else is missing uh, on what it's launching on? Uh, I don't know. I can't see it. Not PS4. Not oh. Xbox One. This, the previous generation of consoles are cut out. Yeah. So that is, that's kind of massive because there's a lot of people that have either Own not been consoles. able to get a new console <laughs> or yep. can't afford to get a new console and are perfectly fine with what their current gen is with PS4. Mm. They're not going to be able to upgrade on that. Um, mm -hmm. Switch seems to be the only ones that are skating it <laughs> right at the moment. And who knows yep. if that's mm. indeed for the current gen Switch or if it winds up being the Switch Pro that's been rumored to be coming out. The the almost guaranteed but not yet released Switch Pro. Uh, <laughs> it's got to make sense, right? And that's certainly the sentiment in the forums at the moment where people are going, well, this would line up with a Switch Pro release yeah. um, in that case. So maybe this is uh, for, foreshadowing that. But again, you don't know. But yeah, yeah that's that's a uh, that would have been, I'd imagine, a pretty hard decision for the studio to have to call, because um, they would know the numbers, they would know how many people are on those platforms, and they would have been going, "Ooh, this is going to be painful." <laughs> now that being said, <clears throat> since we know that Pinball FX is not releasing until later, again, mm. we've speculated probably not until end of third quarter. Uh, so yeah. August, September. Th mm -hmm. There's not going to be any new games being released on FX3. No. So this it's not like you're going to have really. that fear of missing out yet. <laughs> well, no. I mean, unless you see, you know, um, potentially DLC packs being released through VR. and you know, Right. VR is going to be the only one that's getting anything new anytime soon. Well, that and that's only rumored potentially. If they're for some reason the no, they're um, getting Mandalorian you know, in in April. Oh yeah, sorry, yes, but all the other tables coming over right. to it eventually. Right, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, sure, they aren't new, but they'll be new to VR. Right. So, you know, and, and again, brand new remasters of those tables yes. for that platform. So yes, um, yeah, going down the remaster. So, but that's path, that's, that's what, what I'm like. saying. At least there's like you're not going to be like ah, damn it new tables are coming out next week and I'm not going to be buying a PS5 anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, well, now, you know, if it isn't releasing until that third quarter, you're probably going to be, you know, Sony and, and Microsoft are going to have been mass producing by that point. You'll probably be able yep. to catch one before. You might even be able to get one in a Christmas bundle because that's sort of like getting towards the Christmas there, end of the, the scale. So it would right. make sense for them to like align with those bundle deals that always mm -hmm. come out over in the holidays. Mm -hmm. So you might be able to snag yourself a, a console at far less than what they're going for on eBay at the moment. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, just <laughs> save your pennies. Like this gives you a runway and you can actually plan out. You can set aside a little bit of money um, and budget or even look at uh, what upgrades you're going to need to make to your PC and get ready for it. Um, you know, so now it, I do have a, a lot of... I do have a question at the end that is related to the Epic One Year exclusive exclusivity. Mm -hmm. We'll touch on that also a little mm -hmm. bit in a little bit. Um, all right, moving on to what our next batch is here uh, on cab mode on consoles. So there was a question <laughs> about yeah. um, not just cabs, which. Uh, Mel was like, hey, we really you know, like the DIY community. Absolutely, they'll be cab support. Uh, but what about consoles that people want to run and as cabs? So we're trying to avoid feature creep at this point. You know, adding extra bells and whistles, which then end up making game development way longer. Mm -hmm. So yes, they would like to do it. Will it be a launch feature? Probably not, because if they keep on putting in everything that they want, then the launch date just gets pushed back farther and farther. This is interesting because you know this is essentially like Tate mode on um, on on the Switch. Switch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if they can do something similar Tate mode on these PS5 and these current gen consoles, that's like if that's a possibility with this engine, then 
think of all the other games using Unreal that could also benefit from that orientation as well. Like not just not just pinball, but like shoot 'em ups, vertical shoot 'em ups, um, all sorts of games like um, puzzle games that require a long, like Tetris, for example, would require that sort of orientation for for a better experience. So all these different games that could use that orientation, that could be more than just pinball here. Um, it could be wider reaching. So that would be pretty cool. Yeah, we'll see if it uh, we'll see if it gets put in or not. I mean, I have a feeling that they're going to try. Um, yeah, especially in- with with the with how robust both the PS5 and the Series X are, uh, it would make sense to do that. They've got good graphics pipelines in them, and they've got the chops to be able to output like different resolution types. Yeah. Like, like it would just be an option in a menu to flip the screen, basically, and yeah. it would just do it. Like you wouldn't even need to worry about oh, you know, like in Windows, oh, I've got to scale the screen rotate it it's a pain but if it's just like a, a button boom you're done and i think you've seen that in um uh the uh oh shit, the name escapes me now the um demon still they've actually got a tape mode built into that where you can just click a button and it just flips the screen for you yeah uh, and then it's up to you to actually rotate your monitor to support it but it's all there in the code so i can imagine it's going to be like that if they do release it on console eventually what i the one thing that I know a lot of people are, are asking this, and I hope they address this with their cab mode, um, mm. they need to provide the back glass art, and they need to oh, make they it really and do. they need to make it animated, and I yep. hope that they do that um, because it's I don't think it's fair to make the community come up with their own back glass. No, um, especially so now that better. you can do the, the the thumb up on the Williams tables and see the back glass, that uh-huh. should be a given. That should be included in cab mode with everybody yep. having multiple screens it's just uh, i really I want to see how they will do multiple screens on console like are you saying that these next gen consoles have two hdmi outs i'm not uh, i don't know i don't i don't have one so i i can't say that for I sure but say, i'm saying yeah. i'm saying at least for the pc with oh, the PC, new cab yeah. mode yeah, in yeah, pinball yeah. effects please for god's sakes put in your own Zen Zone backlash and make them animated with light show. Um, yep. You know. It would just make the cabin experience look so much better. And consistent. For sure. Uh, consistent across everything. I'm sure your licensors would be happier not, you know, and rather than seeing yeah. people with different artwork of their own choosing up there. Um, yeah, yeah. All, all ripped off from the internet essentially exactly. unlicensed. Exactly. Yeah, they'd be a lot more comfortable with like a... An agreed package, I would think. And um, another yeah. aspect that goes into that is what we're going to go into this next kind of quote with, but just when they go with the VR route, hey, he's using VR. All you have to do is tilt your head and you're going to be seeing these things. So you're going to have yeah, to program Yeah, they're going to need to do it. Yeah. yeah. They are absolutely going to need to think about it. Um, um, but bad news for VR. Any new VR development will happen in Unreal Engine. We kind of suspected that. We, we said that in our VR show, that <laughs> your choices are Unity, Unreal or build your own engine. We knew that they mm-hmm. were going to build their own engine, so it was down to those two. Um, at least in terms of what Oculus can uh, uh, natively support. Um, Correct. But because they're switching to Unreal, so we cannot take previous VR releases and push them into Pinball FX. So that they Pinball FX to right. VR, you're going to be under the same situation where if any of those tables wind up getting a VR release, you're going to have to repurchase them. There's not going to be the carryover nature the thing is that they're, they're not like they're like via the fx2 vr package is for all intents and purpose a, a very nice piece of no longer developed software mm-hmm. uh, it's not going to be it's not going to be getting any more updates like no. there's been a, a long-standing issue in that with the menu like the all the menu words sort of overwrite themselves okay and they bunch up in one spot and it hasn't been patched for months and there's been reports in it in there so like they're but like it doesn't affect your ability to use a menu. It just looks a bit weird. So, and, and if they were going to do any work on FX2, like they would have done that by now. It's not a hard fix. So, the other thing, and this was again a statement from Mel in one of the forums, uh, probably the Discord forum, because the Discord forum really asked a lot of VR questions. So, or not the Discord, yep. uh, the Reddit forum. So, if you're mm-hmm. at all interested in 
future of VR with pinball effects, I really recommend seeking out the Reddit forum that was related to episode three of the pinball show. A lot of stuff VR related. Um, a lot of complaints mm. just in terms of people saying this kind of goes into the uh, number one complaint I was seeing was I don't want to have to rebuy my tables. And I don't think mm. that the reasons that you're giving us, that there's nothing you're going to show us that's going to make me go, yes, I need to rebuy the tables. But if you included VR, then I would because I that's where I'm it. only playing anymore. Um, mm. But mm, the comment was basically, we can't do that due to licensing. Yeah, which is interesting, isn't it? You would yeah. think that it wouldn't be a problem with that. If you get the license, you should be able to do it in VR as well. It's just a different format. But, but it's a different something platform. Yeah, because your headset, Oculus. Oculus, is obviously a completely different store and it's going to require yeah, completely different is. licensing agreements. So mm -hmm. I have a feeling that it relates to that. that. That's why you're not going to have... Again, Zacharia Pinball is... There's no licensed tables. No. So them being able to do just the switch the button and you're in VR, switch the button back and you're out of VR, they can do that. But once yeah, you introduce right. licenses, apparently that's going to be where the issue is. That's um, a problem. And yeah. we keep on saying that licensing ain't no joke. <laughs> yeah. Licensing is hard. Let's go to the mall. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's move on to then what questions we still have not had answered, basically, or what new mm -hmm. questions we have. Number one, are the new tables also going to have a one-year exclusivity on Epic before going to Steam? Or is it just the Pinball FX platform? So what I mean by that is, let's say the platform comes out in September and yeah. you know comes with a launch title. Great. And then two months later, you have a new title that gets released. Well, is that going to then start 12 months exclusivity starting in November? Or, oh, or right. is it when that exclusivity comes around to Steam that any table that has already been released will now also be available? That's a good question. You could make an assumption about it, but it, it would be better to actually, <laughs> it, it would be, no, that's right. You don't want it because it's actually a really valid question. Like, will is the exclusivity period timed per table pack release? Yeah, because I think that's yeah. going to play a part in people's decisions of, right now there's a lot of people that are going, screw you, I'm never joining Epic. I want no part of Epic. I don't like them as a business. I'll wait for Steam. But if all of a sudden it's, I'm going to wait for Steam. Oh, and by the way, you're also going to be waiting an additional year for that title that just released a month prior to the Steam release of Pinball FX coming out. Yeah. That's going to affect people's buying decisions. Um, that is going to do it, yeah. So that is question number one that we have. Um, question mm -hmm. number two actually got answered... Uh, in the show, and I didn't catch it the first time, but are updated physics only for pinball effects? Or excuse me, I'm talking about number, uh, that's number three, number two, excuse me. All right. Are updated physics only available for pinball effects? Has FX3 seen its last update and new table? It sounds like they've seen their last new table. That seems like so. line got yeah. drawn in the sand with, no, we're not developing, we're developing for Unreal, not PX Engine. So therefore... That's right. No new tables. Mm -hmm. But with the physics, what about those Williams volumes one through three? Are they yeah. going to get an update? And is there going to be a... There's quite a few bugs that have been out there for some time with FX3 yes. that people have listed and posted and have been going, what have you been doing this entire time, Zen? Not only are you not giving us tables, you're not giving us bug fixes. Mel did post that there's going to be a large patch to FX3. Mm -hmm. So they're not officially done with FX3 on that front. So that's good that there's going to be a patch, but no mention about whether the physics would be updated on those Williams Volumes 3. I don't expect them to be implemented on all the all the tables. That was kind no, of like in a pipe Williams, dream. But Williams yeah, I do, but not for all the yeah. other, you know, <clears throat> so what do we got in Williams? We've got 20, 19 tables? I don't know how many. Mm -hmm. But no, for the other 80 <laughs> tables, I never expected yeah, nah. those two to, to mm. get it. Um, but the fact that they did it for the arcade one-up cab to mm. me means it should be a rather simple drop-in. Yeah, if it's on the arcade one-up cab, then it, it's... I think you could put money down it's going to be in the patch. Yeah, um, so we'll see. I, I would think. 
We'll see. Um, number three, what Unreal Engine is being used? Okay, so it's Unreal 4, not Unreal 5. Unreal 5 is the brand new spanking one that we all had our jaws drop over the demo reel that got shown. Um, yeah, that was incredible. Yeah, so it's Unreal 4. Again, I saw that with the when they showed the Wild West Showdown uh, table. Um, it was clearly labeled FX3 version. Unreal 4. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's what we're going. Um, but are we going to get adjustable lighting? Or are we still only going to have whatever Zen wants us to have in terms of lighting? And yeah. so here's where you can look mm -hmm. at Pinball Wicked. Because Pinball Wicked is made using the Unreal Engine. Mm. And you do have uh, the ability to change your ambient lighting in that. And so yeah. I'm hoping that it's just a function of Unreal that is rather easy to apply. Um, Hopefully. It's just like an extra framework that they would need to wire in. Because again, by and large, I've been quite happy with Zen's choice of lighting. Yeah, look, it's it's nowhere near as terrible as Farsight's put no, that way. No, no, but it's re it's it's balanced and it it works. But there are those tables that I always go back to Attack from Mars. Damn, it I want that strobe in night multiple. mode. I want it, that in night mode so I can have strobe multiple. Yep, absolutely. It's it's such a cool feature and it needs it really does need dark room for it to like go nuts with. Yeah. So I, I hope that it's there as an option. And I don't need, you know, the absolute slider where I can pick the percentage or everything. Just give no. me... You know, dark or light. Basically, yeah. Dark room. Yeah. <laughs> the room at night, the room as we've determined it, you know. Yeah. And if you want the think, bright uh, daylight version, fine. Throw a bright daylight version in through. I will never touch it, but throw it in there. I will say this though, like Zachariah does this quite well. They actually have three presets, I think, or three yeah, or four so presets. Too. Yeah, and like just adopt that approach. Use that blueprint because it actually works quite well. Can you imagine? I will all, say this though. Would you like winter sun or summer sun? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Would you like? Would you a, like a dappled like, light? A chilly fall day, or? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly. Just, just give me like you know. I think their their options in Zachary are like stormy. Yeah. So stormy environment. There's like daylight, there's night. But that's for looking and... out the window because you have that window that you can look out. But it also affects the uh, the ambient well, light sure. inside as well. But sure. um, yeah, um, you know, so give us a few pre-baked options and that will yeah. probably make it easy for them to implement as well because it's preset. All right. Uh, um, let's hmm. see. Number four. <laughs> so what about South Park Super League, Ninja Gaiden, Street Fighter, or any of those early Zen tables like way back in 2007 um, mm. that were only on Xbox and never came to PlayStation? Is there any chance of those getting remastered? Now, regardless of licensing, is Zen even interested in bringing those back? That's my yeah. question. Well, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Yeah. Because they I might don't... just be like, oh, really, we didn't. I mean, it's not like the Ninja Gaiden table was amazing gameplay. Well, see, I can't comment because I've never played those games. They were before right. my time before I jumped over to Steam. I have no experience. Right. I would, I would still have liked to play um plants versus zombies but i mean popcat is no more so right yeah good luck trying to negotiate that one with ea yeah far out but that's that's so that's what i'm curious to know is is there even an interest from zen in bringing any of those back i personally would say bring them back but remaster the crap out of them redesign them yeah you know do, just do I that the, think, do, of, think, do of a false doing, think of it as the difference between uh, Black Knight and Black Knight 2000. Essentially That's the right. same, but better. <laughs> but better. Oh, yeah, exactly. Or or High know. Speed and The Getaway. <clears throat> That's Perfect right. example of, or of even, not changing even much, the vault, but changing enough. Even the Vault editions of all the Stern games. Like, think of Iron Man Original versus Iron Man Vault. Yeah. Like, there's some notable improvements there to reliability and everything. So put those in. Yeah. And new rules. So, yeah, put those in too. Like, yeah. Uh, Give him a bit of a spit and polish. Yep. Number mm. five. Are the Williams tables still going to be censored for the consoles? And if not, what's the new ESRB rating that they're shooting for? That is going to be a really important question for console owners because they hate the fact that they're censored. They hate it. And if now you're yeah. making them rebuy, 
You better and it's you still better stinted? you better get that cleared up before you they launch. Rebuy. Because that's mm-hmm. going to tick a lot of people off if they rebuy and go, oh wait, we're still gonna deal with the censorship. Because now there's no sense in I mean, obviously there's there's no intention. If you don't if you don't get this solved now, you're not solving it. Period. The end. Yeah, it's it's basically a no longer an argument. It's gonna be like this for the entire time. Yeah. 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 So I want that out there. Uh, you hear me? Mm-hmm. Zen? Yeah. Anybody? Hello, is this thing not on? That, <laughs> not that not that it actually affects us anyway, because no, 'cause I'm on PC, PC users. But, but I feel the pain. But we know. But it's like it's no good. I mean the thing that that I just don't quite understand sometimes is that I don't even know if I would actually miss the adult themes that are being cut out of the the the, the games. Maybe on something like Scared Stiff, it was in, if it was in the platform, yes, absolutely. Yes. But on the tables that are there at the moment, it to look, it doesn't make a lot of difference. The only to me. one that the only one that bugs is what they did for um, with Medieval Madness. They used the family mode, and so the DMD also is altered, or just sort of oh, censored yeah. over it. That's the you know uh, that'll that's, that's a call out that you'll see. Yeah, okay. Mm, yeah. That that that's probably jarring enough that you'd be annoyed with it, and that's yeah. a fair call. But you're right. A lot of um, the table art, I don't even notice until I'm like looking for it. Yep I, I I couldn't tell you what the censored things are on the table. I could not tell you. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm sure I'm sure there are people out there that do know that. That's a big and question. Answer that in one important. of your answer that in one of your upcoming shows, guys. Um. Mm. Number six, does supporting DIY cabs, because Mel specifically said DIY cabs, also mean supporting retail cabs, such as VP cabs? Mm. Because again, if you're dealing with that cabinet people and dealing with cabinet codes, if it turns out that you're only supporting those that people make themselves, (laughs) as opposed Mm. to what you're purchasing in retail, because that's kind of an issue for the cab community that I'm sure they would like um, some sense of, of not reassurance having to wonder. About... Yeah, reassurance. There's a word mm. I'm looking for. Thank you. Yeah. Because uh, I've know, been getting a lot of, oh, I shouldn't say a lot. I've gotten three uh, emails from uh, This Week in Pinball uh, audience asking for my recommendation on pinball cabs, full-size pinball cabs. Hmm. And you know, one problem is is I've not put hands on any of these that are out on the market right now, so I can't comment on that front. But my other thing is, before you make that giant purchase, you're gonna want to know if Zen, who obviously is the leader, I mean, if you're planning on using Zen's product, um, is Zen going to be supportive of the product? That's that you right, because you don't want to lay out seven thousand bucks and find out. Nope. <laughs> yeah, you don't you don't want a seven thousand dollar brick on your hands. Right. Like uh that's not good. So that was that one. The thing and is then... though, on the other nope. on the other side of things though, like while while we would never condone this at all, because piracy is definitely a bad thing, the only thing that that would do is force people to pirate the game and make it so that they could actually play it on their on their seven thousand dollar cabinet so right i think going down that path and and just blocking them from doing it people don't stop at being blocked at software they will just find a way to do it so you know that would be a bad decision on zen's part to really restrict what cabinets it it actually is available on if it look if you've got (laughs) competitive product that you're, you're not happy with and that's fine but all of these generic four or five thousand dollar pinball cabinets like they're clearly a professionally made cabinet. They look unique enough. I think if you were to take a photo of that and say, this is my cabinet, it was produced by this company and send them like evidence of a receipt that you purchased it from there or something like that. That's probably going to be enough for them to go. That's a legit pinball cabinet. That's not a competing product that doesn't impinge on any of our copyright. So there you go. We'll have it. Yeah. Maybe there's just a few extra steps you might need to jump through. But again, clarify it. That would be the easiest way to solve the problem. And then final question that we have here. Will new tables come to the Williams app? So mobile. Uh, or is mobile going to need a whole new app for Unreal Engine 
also, which Jared well, is theorizing that it might already be running <laughs> Unreal. It may very well already be there. Yeah, that's um, right. No. However, on the... I don't know which thread. Anyway, one of the threads, Mel hmm. said that they can't comment on mobile at the moment and won't be commenting probably until the second half of 2021. So, so that's a question that's going to linger for quite some time. Um, Sounds like they're working some things out still. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that was the episode for the most part. There was one other thing that I just had to had to laugh at. Um, hmm. They hinted that they've got a Zen original in the works beyond Mandalorian, an actual Zen original. Hmm. And then they went, would you believe we have three Zen originals? To which my response was, yeah, we knew that two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you go way back in our channel... You'll probably find an episode where we talk about with Mel him specifically those... saying that oh instead of it's one of our Mel interviews oh instead of it being a two pack of Zen originals it's going to be a three pack of Zen originals we've been waiting ever since then to know what it was and the, that was the funny part was that then they went what do you think the theme is going to be Jared what's the theme that we think it's going to be well to anything epic like Fortnite perhaps maybe uh, it could be, geez. Um, or what we were saying back then, Dreadnoughtical, oh, which is Operancia. Dread, <laughs> all of their own IPs. Yeah, of course yeah. it is. Like, where's my disco dodgeball pinball, right? Yeah, right. Like, bring or, that on. Or Infinity Golf, you know. Yeah. With, with yeah, so, pin golf. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. So. Bring that on. I just played pin golf the other day. It was a blast. So anyway, yeah. I, just, I, I just had to have a laugh at that where I was like, Really? This is your breaking news? We broke that so long ago. It's old and moldy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. You're 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 more you're resurrecting it from the dead more than anything. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> All right. That's. I mean, that's a lot of information. And yeah, it's a lot of information. The main thing is, like, again, it does suck. There's no doubt about it. I prefer playing in Steam. I like all my games. Yeah, me in too. Steam. I, it bugs yep. me indeed when I have to open up the Epic Store to go Another play platform. a different game um, that's not available on Steam. No, I like mm. it all centralized. I yeah, feel too. that, believe me. Um, yep, I'm the same. Like I don't like I installed Epic the other day because I felt I had to, and it didn't feel good. I didn't like it. Yeah, like it's a but. Mm. Completely understand Zen's reasoning, and I would hope that that's hopefully what that's what this breakdown helps do. Because again, you probably heard the bad news and just tuned out, as Switched opposed off. to yeah. seeing. And went business. straight to Reddit. Yeah, there, <laughs> yeah. There's, there's business reasons behind this, and there, you know, some people were like, "Oh, it's a cash grab." I'm like, "How is it a cash grab?" The cash grab is putting out an inferior product just to you know quickly, just to milk some money not redoing everything. Um, you know, it's not like no small effort has been put into this. Um, and it's also setting them up for multiple years down the line as opposed to just, you know, treading water. Exactly. Yeah, it's this is laying the groundwork for years to come. Um, so getting this, like, essentially bedrock laid is super important to get right for them. So, so I would hope, yeah, I would really hope that uh, Zen does kind of manage to do what I know what uh, Rock Band and uh, Guitar Hero managed to do, which was whenever they came out with their next, you know, when it went Rock Band one to Rock Band two, you were able to pay ten bucks and get most of the songs ported over, so that you could still play them. You you didn't have to go back to Rock Band one. You could just play them all in Rock Band 2. And then when Rock Band yeah. 3 came out, they did the exact same thing. Again, pay your licensing fee, boom, it'll all shift over. Jump's so I, I hope that Zen is able to to work that out. I'm not... Uh, I'm not confident that that will. Yeah. But I, I hope. 
if they can even get something close to even a little bit of a discount like for example when i when i'm in the the oculus rift or not oculus rift quest 2 store and they offer discounts on game of the day essentially like yeah. they'll, they'll do one um they they're not big discounts like they're 20% off um they're certainly not the 50% off that we we're, we're spoiled for with a lot of the zen um things at the moment um but you know, a bit of money off will just help a little bit with that sticker shop. Well, I'm just, but I think also if if these Zen Legacy packs, again, most of the time right now you can find whenever a Steam sale goes on, the Marvel tables are almost always at least half off. Yeah, that's right. So if when going into the Epic Store and they release the Marvel pack, if that bundle equates to just like retail price, you might say in Epic Store equates to what it was 50% off over on Steam, mm. that would be a huge thing. And and why would they... Again, it's it's renegotiating with Marvel because what happens is when you knock a table down on sale, Zen has to eat the cost of what they pay to Marvel. Mm. Marvel's still getting their same cut whether the game was on sale or not. They're not getting discounted. It's what... It's basically Zen discounting their cut. So, but if you repackage it and redo the deal, then Zen's not taking the hit on that, and the license is, you know, being cool with it. So I think I think that's what they're talking about with doing these legacy pack pricing. Um, yeah. And then, Isn't and then, <clears throat> if it goes on sale in the Epic Store, then it would be even more. Now that's I don't know right. how often Epic does sales. <laughs> So the other interesting thing about Epic is um, they offer a free game um, every now and again. And uh, in the Discord forum, one of the um, members said that the the one tomorrow, if you're listening, day of podcast, will be Creature in the Well, which is a pinball-esque dungeon crawler. So that aside, you should get that if you're on Epic. It sounds like a really good game. It's one I've actually got shortlisted on Steam. So I'm going to be grabbing that for free. Thank you very much. Um, but if you think about that model, I wonder if Zen could somehow negotiate a sweet deal with Epic. Because you'd imagine that those free games of the day, that's not the hit on the studio. That would be, I would think, Epic taking the hit on that. That's Epic. Yeah, it's absolutely Epic taking the hit. Because when Epic put so, on, they put on uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto V, that was them yeah, yeah. taking it. It wasn't uh, Rockstar. Rockstar, yeah, that's right. So think about that. Like, this is another opportunity that you get with exclusivity for a year. Maybe this could be the way that they work around some of that sticker shock. Yeah. They might say, for a day only, you can download this pack for free. Yeah. And that gets you on board free. Maybe even, you know, you get the FX um, base pack, FX platform plus a certain number of games included for free. Like, it, yeah. these are know. things that they can do on that platform we'll, we'll have to we'll have to see uh, the other thing that I really hope and again just reiterating what already was said but that Zen does do and this would be a good bit of goodwill is Williams Volumes 1 through 3 put in the new physics um, yep. update those as part of as part of the uh, quality of life pack yep. when there's sun sending that platform yep I think that's going to make a lot of people happy and you know that's you know a lot of people are going to be going Look, okay we can keep playing that on, on PS4 Xbone and that'll keep us going until such time as perhaps we can look at getting another console. Yeah. So, yeah. Fair call. All right. So that's it for our breakdown of the show. We've got more to talk about regarding this. Some of it mm. just in terms of, uh, you know, just teasing it out here. But how many of you really are just going to give the finger to Zen and be like, nope, done, I'm out, never again with you? And how many of you are just posturing and will cave the second you see a title come out that you're like, yes, I need that. And, you know, mm -hmm. then you're going to go ahead and pop onto Epic and buy. Uh, <laughs> um, that's yeah. just one of those aspects that we're going to touch upon. Um, going to be keeping up on the forums, reading everything and seeing what people are, are interested in uh, us discussing. And clearly send us tweets uh, to at Blockade of what you want us, you know, what are aspects that we're missing? What are aspects that we didn't talk about in this that you want us yeah. to 
touch upon in our next episode because we will absolutely hit this because we're not done with this announcement by any stretch, I don't think. Um, no, there's more, there's more meat the... on the bone. We just wanted to get the information out and react um, to what was being what was being said. To the broad strokes, if you will. To the broad strokes, yes. All right, so mm. we're going to be talking about that next time. But as usual, we'll also be talking about Jared's favorite things. Stuff and things. All right, folks. Until next time, thanks again for supporting us. Thanks again for watching. Thanks again for giving us a thumbs up to combat all those trolls that like to give us thumbs down. All right. Until next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.